Okay, folks, now we're going to go through um, a session on the logical framework. Um, this is a tool that's used um, quite extensively in youth work in Ireland and in a whole range of different uh, development contexts. It's used for projects, it's used for programs, it's used at national level. The EU is quite um, is quite keen and this is a as a project management tool um, and it's been used in international development for 20 years um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over it one thing to be conscious of is I refer to it as the logical framework analysis or the logical framework other people re le refer to it as the logic matrix or the logic model they're all effectively the same. There's slight difference to maybe how people use them, but um, they're effectively the same variations on the same idea. Okay, so what is it? It's a project management tool which provides a structure for specifying the different components of a project. And it, it connects those different components using a, 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 a fairly clear uh, logic. Um, so this is, I suppose, why the, the term logical goes in, but it, 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 it attaches um, um, cause and effect, means and end, to between project objectives, project activities, project outputs, out outcomes. So it, it creates a way of understanding and planning the project, which is consistent um, no matter whether you're in the process of designing it or whether you're analysing or whether you're implementing it. So um, the theory of the logic framework is that anybody can understand uh, the connections that there is between the different phases in the project. Okay, um, it is really effectively a way of presenting a program. So it's just a visual tool or a planning tool. Um, but what it does is it gives integrity to the planning process. And one of the challenges before the logic model model was 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 widely used is that um, when somebody was designing a project and they were doing it using their own system or using a system that um, they'd learned from another uh, another sector or even. The, the various different um, planning tools that would be within the community voluntary sector. Um, if somebody was evaluating that, or if they were reviewing it, or even if they were implementing it, um, having been adopted by an organization, if they didn't understand the way the plan was put together, it could be very difficult for them to evaluate or implement it with integrity. So I suppose the strength of this is that it's a universal system and that anybody and everybody involved in every stage of the process should understand. Um, this is a, a handbook, um, or just a reference to a handbook, that the logic framework or the logical, logical framework um, is the main tool used within the remaining uh, project cycle stages. So um, it's used to plan, but it's also used to implement and evaluate. Um, uh, you'll use it for implementing, for planning and, and evaluating. In particular, you see it as a dynamic tool. So I suppose one of the intentions, and this isn't always applied in practice, but one of the intentions with the logical framework is that um, it gives you an opportunity to change things. Um, and the reason that it does is that the, the idea behind it, and we'll come to it in a minute, but the idea behind it is that um, if the logic is clear and if the project is well structured, then a change you can see the consequences of a change, both in terms of the things that went before it and the things that went after it. So you can predict, you can structure, you can build in change in quite a dynamic way. Okay, the basic principles. Um, a good logical framework shouldn't take more than a couple of sheets of paper. Now, I'm not saying how big those sheets of paper are. Say for a, a, a project of a reasonably small scale, if you're talking thousands of euros, um, you should not take more than two sheets of, um, of A4 paper. You know, uh, there is no point having an enormous planning tool for a project uh, that's relatively modest in terms of its expenditure. However, when you start getting into projects where you have um, you have resources in the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of euro, you really should be able to put the logic framework um, up on the wall um, in the form of two um, A3 sheets. You know, big big sheets, but that you should be able to see the whole project. Um, 
but when you look at an organization and and if that organization is running multiple projects and multiple programs and um, the size of your logical framework can become somewhat unyielding um now um the difficulty then isn't necessarily the project the, the logical framework doesn't work is that um it's hard for people to visualize how the whole thing connects when the when the the actual um, plan itself is quite disjointed and you'll see how that might be the case when we when we go through the lecture so it should be able to be it should be a freestanding comprehensible document so um you shouldn't need a huge amount of explanation the logical framework itself should stand alone um and the last thing is it should be developed with beneficiaries um this can be challenging um, if you're not very familiar with the use of the technique because it can present as quite complex. It's not. It's not complex. In my opinion, it's not complex. But if you're not very familiar and you're not comfortable in using it, you can trip up on the technique. Um, and the other thing is that you should always look at it as at the base upon which your project is going to be evaluated and judged. Okay. So this is a sort of typical logical framework. This is how it looks. This is the template for it. So if you look at it, um, I'm going to go down here. If you look at the, the project narrative, this means really the description of the project. You have the overall goal for the project. Underneath the goal, you have objectives. You may have three, four, five. You might even have six objectives. I, it's not, generally speaking, accepted as being good practice to go beyond six. But if you have... Um, six objectives um, and those objectives obviously um, uh, um, those objectives obviously emerge from the goal and then from the objectives you have outputs and outputs might be in relation to the type of um, activities that your project is going to engage with you know so it might be training programs it might be outputs might be the intellectual outputs we all know the intellectual outputs on erasmus projects so it might be the likes of the creation of a virtual uh, youth town or it might be uh, the creation of guidelines and then in order to achieve those outputs what are the inputs what are the resources what are the expertise what are the um the the, the finance and um what are the things you need to input uh, into the project in order to secure the out outputs that you you're 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 looking for so the logic goes down down that way the next line is indicators of achievement and means of verification and key assumptions now so what what what, what we do how we generally and i'll go through this in more detail we don't the, the natural sort of inclination um is to go from left to right across across like this so you go you, you put in your goal and then you put in the um the means of verification of the goal or the sorry the the indicator success the means of verification and the assumptions you don't do this isn't how you do the logical matrix the way you do the logic matrix is you go from the goal to the objectives outputs inputs and then what you do is you go over to this side and you look at what are the assumptions that you're making in relation to the inputs um, and then you go through all the assumptions up the way and then once you've that done you look at um, what are the indicators so when your goal is achieved how will you know that your goal is achieved how will you know that um, say for example the overall goal of a project might be to to um, to increase um, increase school attendance for a particular group of people how do you know you've 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 achieved that and um, the there are obviously ways. Okay, we'll go through each of these in turn. Okay, so the history of the logical framework is that it was first developed by the United States um, Overseas Development Agency, USAID, in the 1960s. Um, and it was adopted for a lot of bilateral, what bi bilateral, um, what bilateral means is government to government programs and multilateral um programs in the 1980s and the 1990s. I first came across it in overseas development in the 1990s and it's been used pretty much since. Um, it's a project management tool now in, in Irish development projects and uh, across the EU and there are various different projects. The one the ways of, of, of using it, the way we're using it is what's called the objective orientated intervention planning and that's I suppose the overall theory behind the, the logical framework um, that we're using and really essentially what that means is you begin with the objectives of the project 
Okay, as you saw in the diagram earlier, what a logical framework is, it's a four by four matrix. Um, each row represents a different level of the project, goal, objective, output, input. And then the columns uh, represent different characteristics of each of those levels. So um, one is the narrative, the indicators, the means of verification, and the project assumptions. And here we go again. So this is the, um, I suppose just to point out as well, is um, indicators to verify achievement. Um, sometimes people use that, uh, sometimes people refer to this as um, indicators of success and then means of verification or um, uh, uh, means of, of, of evaluation. Um, so where does it fit in? So within the overall project cycle, what you do oftentimes, you start off with what we'd call a situation analysis. So you, you do a, a, um, you do a, a, a review of the um, issues within a particular area, and then you do a stakeholder analysis. So it's a needs analysis, it's an assets. So it could be there's a whole range of different ways of doing stakeholder analysis, but you talk with people about what their needs are. Um, then you look at problem objective setting and you know the one we will look at is the problem tree so what that means is that once you have a sense of what the um, development context is like you need to start figuring out what the problems are and how you might generate solutions and then what you would need to do is you need to get a sense as to whether um, there's other ways of looking at the problems than you've been in a position to do. So some of that maybe um, might be bringing other people in who have other ways of looking at it or looking at multiple different types of analysis. So you might do a participatory analysis using creative theatre or you might use art or you might look at um, different creative ways. And it, it is no harm then to look at other ways of looking at the problem, maybe using quantitative data analysis or using um, other techniques and maybe bring other people with other expertise in as well because you don't want to get locked into a group think. You don't want to get locked into a sort of linear way of thinking. Okay, and then what you need to do is once you have a sense of what it is that you're going to do, you need to look at planning what activities uh, and that's really when the logical framework comes in. So you need to have done quite a lot of thought. You need to have done a, like quite a lot of research and analysis before you start putting the logical framework together. Um, and at that point, you go back to your stakeholders. You will have talked to your stakeholders about their needs. And then you start working with them again on, um, on, on um, putting together the logical framework. Um, and then, I suppose, once your logical framework is in place and once hopefully you've secured funding, you can move on to the phase whereby you need to implement. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold off here um, and 